Okay, um, welcome to my little channel, a little project I'm, gonna, I'm starting up called, I'm calling The Hated Painted. It's a place where I paint politicians and talk about them. So I've, I've been painting politicians for a while. Um, I'm a bit of an odd thing, I know, but I, I guess I'm just fascinated in their faces. And I thought, well, at least this time, I'm gonna do it and film it and discuss um, exactly who I'm painting and what I think of them. But with enormous and enduring gratitude, to have had the opportunity to serve the, the party I love. Yeah, there we go. It's Theresa May. So it's Theresa May I'm painting and her seven Brexiteers. I pick seven random. No, not seven. Seven most prominent Brexiteers that have dubbed her seven orfs. Theresa May and the seven orfs. Awful. It's in the Urban Dictionary. Found it there. Thought it was apt. Anyway, rather than spend too much more time talking about her just as she's about to leave, leave as this week as of as of the time of recording this video. Um, what can we say? I want to spend more time focusing on the people she's around. She's surrounded herself with the people she's kowtowed to, the people she rather probably could have done better with sidelining. People who lied during the Brexit campaign, lied to the the public, lied to the voters. The if you wish, snake oil salesman. Yeah, and first up, we've got Michael Gove. I think the people in this country have had enough of experts. Yeah, that's a famous clip about being fed, fed up of experts, which he said after being confronted with uh, the claims of people across industries from across organizations, from the IMF, the World Bank, the Bank of England, the NHS. Yeah, I mean, you could argue it might have been a spur of the moment thing to say, a bit of a thoughtless thing to say. But since he has been confronted on the subject since a number of times, and he does refuse to apologise, um, so we should staple it to him. Anyway, next up we have, this man is Liam Fox. The free trade agreement that we will have to come to with the European Union should be one of the easiest in human history. So Liam Fox. He was the uh, Secretary of, S of State and International Trade. And this is his claim that apparently be one of the easiest in history to do, making a deal with the EU after Brexit. He also said that he could make 40 trade deals the second after Brexit with non-EU countries. I mean, exactly how when usually trade deals take multiple years. Um, Anyway, next up is Ian Duncan Smith. Agree to the alternative arrangements on the Irish border, which allowed you to have no fixed border and the process. Now, these have been worked through, they've been proposed, but the government's... <laughs> okay, this is Ian, Ian Duncan Smith, and the guy next to him is Pascal Lamy. I thought it was a funny clip. He's the former director of the WTO. That's Pascal Lamy, and not Ian Duncan Smith. No, he's a former, um, former leader of the Conservative Party. Um, who um, has made a ton of porkies during the uh, Brexit campaign. And um, not that I know much about um, the Northern Ireland backstop. Um, it's, I thought it was quite funny. Anyway, next up we have... There's no, there's no sort of systematic uh, uh, impact assessment. Yeah, this guy. This guy is David Davis, another charismatic character in the, in the, um, the Brexit mob. Yeah, uh, this is the moment where he, um, he disclosed he had done nothing to um, ensure an assessment had been done on the impact of Brexit on the British economy after working on it for two years. He shortly after stepped down, claiming it was over not agreeing with May's deal. Um, anyway, next we have, we have, we have Jacob Rees-Mogg. Napoleon and Hitler all wanted to create a single European power. Oh God, why is it like, you know, Britain, you always harp back to the war. I mean, it, it becomes even more ridiculous in the Brexit debate. Um, the, um, Jacob Rees-Mogg, he's been one of the prominent um, salespeople for Brexit since the referendum, and he's really become a household name since. I mean, he, he's almost a caricature in his own, his own self, like the way he dresses, the way he looks, and the way he talks. He's a man who's representative of, of, a, of, a, of a class not common to the average Brit. Um, and he's profited handsomely since the, the referendum. Apparently, uh, reportedly, he's made seven million quid since, um, as a result of the Brexit vote. Um, 
yeah, um, oh, he was a funny guy to paint, this guy. He does look a character. Um, next, next we have Dominic Raab. This is the peculiar, frankly, geographic economic entity that is the United Kingdom. We are, and I hadn't quite understood the full extent of this. Yeah, that, Dominic Raab, he, 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 he only became to prominence recently uh, and became the very first, uh, the very second rather, um, Bre Brexit secretary. Um, and that was a clip where he was Brexit secretary, where he, it was, he exposed himself for uh, not knowing anything about the trade, um, the importance of trade between Calais and Dover, which of course is a huge thing in the UK, for the UK and Europe. And this is of course Boris. We can take back control of 350 million pounds a week yes. and spend on our priorities here yes. in this country, well including on the National Health Service. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's saying what's on the bus behind him, the famous bus with a figure of the internet. Yeah, I mean, this man's made a career out of lying. He lied as a journalist. He, he lied He lied to his wives, he lied to his mistresses. He lied, I mean, not that that should matter, but it shows a side of his character. And of course, he lied during the Brexit campaign. And I've got a few more lies rolling up in a bit once we see his face transmogify. Yeah, that photo's from the time he was mayor. Yeah. A comical image of him. Here we go. We can take back control of our immigration system. Yeah, Britain's always been in control of its immigration system. Um, that's why they never joined Schengen. We can, also, we can also get rid of so much of the pointless rules and regulations that are holding back. What rules and regulation, really? <laughs> You cannot sell bananas in bunches of more than two or three bananas. You cannot, you cannot yes. sell bananas with abnormal curvature of the fingers. I mean, it's incredible today that even today, even since everything, Why people still believe this. Why should they tell us? Yes. Why should they tell us how yes. powerful our vacuum cleaners should yes. be? Yes. Why should they tell us how powerful our hair dryers should yes. be? Legend yeah, I mean, I mean, I watched that and I, 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 I found it's ridiculous. And I, maybe it shows how divided we are. I know many people watch that. And, and, and find him even more endearing and be even more convinced that Brexit is a great thing. Um, I think it shows where we are today and it, it's a real sad thing. I, I, I feel, I mean, Britain to among the rest of the world with these populist movements is not immune to um, this whole notion of alternative facts, not listening to experts and just having simple pure faith that something could happen that something could work in despite of all the evidence before us. Anyway, um, yeah, I know this has been very opinionated. This will be very opinionated. And um, if you made it this far, thank you for listening.